welcome to the first Og Camp. Hang on, first? <laughs> oh, oh, hold yeah. that thought. Hold that thought, yeah? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was first welcome first. to Og Camp. Welcome to Og Camp. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yeah, I was point. going to say, let's see how today goes, but actually, there's quite a lot of people here. I'm scared. I yeah. yeah, ask them again at the end. That's true. Yeah. Before we go on, we should say who we all are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Do we have to? Yeah. Are we not wearing names? Oh, I am. I'm Popey's not. got a name badge. Yeah, yeah. get you. Yeah. You've all got a name. Am I the only one name badge? It is on the list of things we should say. Oh, I've got, got a name badge. No. Am I the only one without a name badge? I haven't got one. Yeah. Okay, so that's Tony. Hi. Alan. Hi. Hello. Laura. Dan. Seb. I'm the grumpy old bloke. <laughs> Simon. 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 There's one guy who's not here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's Davey or Dave Walker from uh, UUPC, and when I said he, uh, there's good excuses, his is quite a good one. Mm. Uh, he had a baby boy last night. Wow. Uh, well, he did. didn't. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been pretty it's epic, news. as far as excuses go. His <laughs> wife had a little baby boy last night, almost timed in sync with Old Camp, but uh, not quite. But yeah, he's uh, at home, healthy baby boy and wife. <laughs> I think it's called No Name Yet. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, so uh, one just per- Dave, one who's, uh, yeah, congratulations for Dave. Dave. Congratulations to Dave. So the first thing is, we want to say thank you to everyone who's come. This is yeah. much more people in here than we ever anticipated. We thought it would be us talking to the crew and <laughs> <laughs> nobody else at all. So a really big thank you. Yeah. And on the subject of the crew, a massive thank you to the crew for helping out and yeah. sorting thank everything out. So big, yeah. big thanks to everyone who's helped out. This All these guys without. over here, there's some over there, they're, they're everywhere. Over there. Right. Very good. Stand up and yeah. take a bow wherever you are. They get free mugs. They're going to get mugged now. <laughs> they're going to get, sorry, not mugged, mugs. <laughs> Yeah. Go, go no, that's not what shirt. I thought you said. <laughs> yeah, we haven't got yellow shirts. Maybe if this happened again, we might get t-shirts. If. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> 2010! <laughs> <laughs> ha- no. Haven't we learned anything from <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> Clearly not, no. <laughs> uh, okay. I can't believe that's something, did I? Um, what were we going to do next? This is where my, my laptop failed, so... Uh, prizes for the raffle? Yes. Yeah, we got the raffle. Yeah. Sort out. So where is it? I can Where's tell you're all excited by the raffle. How know. many tickets? Dave will be pleased to know. Dave two. I'm excited. Dave to buy any other book, of, another book of tickets for the is raffle. Dave two here. That He'll be yeah. super pleased that we got past one thousand three hundred and thirty-seven tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Am I supposed to draw them? Or are we just going to get people to draw? Them? No, no, we're drawing them. We're oh, drawing. Right. We're drawing them. So we'll take the it in turn. Laura can draw one. Get your tickets out, please. Get your tickets out. Are they ready? Lots of digging in pockets going on. Drum roll, please. I haven't got Opie. a drum. I'm going to do that one first. Go on then. And what's this one? F- are we get- now, this is a question for you lot. Oh, yeah. Do you want to choose your prize, or are we going to tell you what prize this ticket is for? Yeah? Okay. All right. Okay, then. So what's this one for? One of the hoodies? This one's for a piece of paper. <laughs> With a number on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get to keep your ticket. That's, that's the prize. I think it should be for the Arduino. Oh, right. Okay, Laura has spoken. Okay. It's for the Arduino. This is for the Arduino. Arduino Mega. It's green 437. Oh! No, it's not. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we got, we've got, we've got, got the winner. winner. We've got a winner. Hey, well done. Hey. Yeah, if you do win, you might be better off going around the side there to get your prize. What's your name, sir? Arvidas, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Make yeah. something cool. fantastic. Popey, do the honours. <laughs> I'm right. not looking, I'm not drawing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's green. <laughs> uh, What's it for? What's it for? It's for, uh, there's a book over there. It's a book, okay? And the, the number is... No, 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 it's not. This no, is, no, hang on, this is the, the, Vim, the Vim book, yeah. This is, this is a better book. book. Yeah. Donated by Live Log, they have to keep Vim. saying that. They're right, the number is... Log, that book. <laughs> 404, prize not found. <laughs> oh, no way! We've got to give the man a book. No, we've got a, we've got a special prize for John. He's had trouble finding a decent book lately. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a copy of <laughs> Art of the Community and Vi for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll Magic. draw the next one, I think. And that okay. should be I'll for hold the... I'll it. Go on. I don't know what... This will be for the, the... I'm kind of looking. 
<laughs> this will be for the Linus Torvalds signed program thing that I Ooh. ripped up half in my bag on the way home, but I promise you it's genuine. First orange ticket, so all you orange people. Three, four, one, anyone? Anyone want to claim that? Three, four, one. Yeah, hey. there's someone there. Hey. There we go. There we go. Cherish that. It's signed by uh, Linus Torvald. Reluctantly. Loads Greg of other people as well. Yeah. What's your name, sir? Marshall. Marshall. Hey. Congratulations. Yep. Good man. So, Fab, are you going to pull one out? <laughs> <laughs> and a ticket. <laughs> and, then, and then draw the raffle, yeah. So what price that for? Uh, well, oh, you can choose. You can choose. Heck. I'm going to take a Viglin. No, no, no. This is for you to give away. You're not taking <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Then I'm giving away a <laughs> Excellent. It's orange 933. Three. No? Anyone? Orange 933? Three, three? Yeah. <laughs> My God, how many tickets uh, uh, One of the crews, wasn't it? Is that, is that legal? <laughs> that you bought a Viglin there. <laughs> In tickets. Are we, are we allowing that? The crew can yeah. win? Yeah, of course cool. we can. Well, we didn't say no. So, <laughs> when we well, took his someone money. Someone sold him the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, whoever sold him the tickets, basically, I think wasn't bothered. I sold him the tickets. You're implying there's a whole load more decision-making process behind this than there was. <laughs> Cherish that. It was only in mid-afternoon we realised we were going to have to rip up all the tickets to put them in a bucket. I know. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> ah, right, I want one of those Ongeo bags. Cool. Orange. Orange. Oh. <laughs> Seven. Mm, one. Ooh. Four. Seven, Seven, one. Seven, one, four. Seven, one, four. Orange 714, anyone? Come in number 714. Oh. No. Is there, oh, no, is there no, an, is an email is, address on the back? No. no. This is bound to happen. So what do we do? Do we put this back in? Well, no, we put it back in. because no, 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 We're going to put it draw it out again. <laughs> do a re- yeah, yeah pick on again. Go on, draw again. Got it. But not yours. Not an orange, ginger one. This one's got a name on the back. 228, orange. 228, orange, anyone? Yeah. Dick Turpin. Oh, that's Pete. Uh, oh, oh, Pete, Pete Cannon. Cannon. It's yeah. Pete Cannon. Well, we know he was okay. here to leave. Oh, so you he didn't say it. what prize he was taking. I'll, I'll be taking it. Yeah. He did. He wanted a Viglin, but he's not getting one. He's no. getting no. whatever you picked, the bag. Yeah, which is <laughs> I'll, get I'll get it back. Congratulations, Peter. You've rules. got a big bag. Now, he's a vehement um, anti Ubuntu pro Arch Linux person, so an Ubuntu <laughs> OJ bag is <laughs> absolutely perfect. just what he's always wanted. Perfect. Yeah, we'll put a book in it. Put the in it. Awesome. Look, there are Tony, ten. I think oh, you're, oh, it's my turn. you're yeah. turn to draw. <sighs> What's it for, Tony? Before you draw it, <laughs> uh, it is for one of the hoodies. There's like two different sizes, so you There's can choose which two, size. Lo- two large fits. and one extra large. Okay. <laughs> it's an orange one. Sorry, green fans. Oh, <laughs> 216. Anyone? Two, orange name on the back, is it? There is no name. Dick Turpin. On orange 216. Yeah, we got it. Uh, we got it at the back. Excellent. Well done. Come up and Excellent. find a hoodie of a. Are we going back round again? Or yeah, back in the same way? Hmm? How many more prizes? Go on, just keep going. I'm a beer all day at this rate. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Let's just keep going. Speed Two hour podcast. Yeah, That's exactly. what you guys do all the time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is as well. Right, it's green ticket, 136. Green 136, anyone? Yeah. What's, What's it? Uh, Ron, it's Ron. Ron! Big Ron! Excellent. Oh, you didn't Big say Ron. what it was for. Ron, pick it yourself, mate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excellent. He's, oh, okay. What are you picking? What? What's this for? Hang on, you can't really tell until Ron picks what he's having. Otherwise, oh, there'll be a bun fight by the prizes. We'll be here. Run I would on. quite like to see that. Mm, need buns in your own time, Ron. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's green. We're all waiting for you. Don't worry. <laughs> There's a mirror behind you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's going for the Viglin. Congratulations, oh, hey, Ron. Oh, Ron. Oh, good prize. So what's left? We've got uh, a couple of two bags, laptop and bags and two, two hoodies. hoodies. Okay, I'm going to take a laptop bag, and it's green, 172. Green, 172. Anyone? Yay! Yay! What are we going for? Another bag or a hoodie? Go for a hoodie. It's, a hoodie, time. it's hoodie time, isn't it? Hoodie. It's hoodie time. It's hoodie. It's hoodie time. 69. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's favourite number. Do we have to cut that out? Don't want it. 69? Oh, oh, sorry, it's orange. Orange. I could see that. I don't know why you. <laughs> Yay! Congratulations. So we're down to one bag and one hoodie. 
Yeah. One bag and one hoodie. We may as well give the other hoodie away first. So it's green. Sorry, it's not green. <laughs> I can't see it's not green. It looks green Fail. for me. Fail. <laughs> it's orange 673. Anyone? 673. Ah, ah congratulations, M. Excellent. Yeah, I think Laura needs to go on there. And last but definitely not least is the last bag. <laughs> As modelled by Anna. Please be a Fedora fan. Please be a Fedora fan. <laughs> <laughs> go on, John. Oh. It's green. Four. <laughs> One. <laughs> Three. Isn't that the same person who won before? Yeah, no, that's yeah, right. Laura James. Fantastic. Congratulations, Lorna. Excellent. Thanks to everyone for buying tickets in the raffle. Yes. Stopping us from going bust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to do the yeah, yeah, Microsoft yeah. T-shirt? Oh yeah, we have got. Even though we're not sponsored by Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. Kind of well, yeah, why Where did we get that from? I wanted to it's burn what, it, but you might call the. Uh, Wooden spoon prize, I guess. Throw it at the audience. Yes, that's a good <laughs> that's idea. A good Come idea. to OGCAMP and get a Microsoft T-shirt thrown at you. It's actually quite It's quite cool. nice, actually, yeah. yeah well, does it say Microsoft? It does say yeah. Microsoft. It does, it does say, say very <laughs> small. <laughs> but we do have black marker pens over there, so... Uh, yeah. 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 OK, so who's going to draw this? Poby, go, go on, on out. I'm not going to draw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel tarnished. Won't we'll even touch a out. ticket that is related to it. It's all right on my Everyone's screen. screen. God, 29. <laughs> 29. 29. Nobody's going to claim it. Oh. Nobody wants it. Nobody <laughs> wants it. Sorry, did I hear someone say burn it? I said burn it. I said we should burn it on stage. We're going to stand here all day until somebody claims it. Yeah. <laughs> the door's on, locked. Come another one out. Nobody wants that one. Does anybody actually want it? Stick your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we right, really let's move be... on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like I... yesterday asking for a Windows laptop in a Linux conference. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, I've pulled this one out. Ticket. Right. So we might as well. <laughs> so you've got to take two, this home. Two five six. Ooh, the number is going to Orange two. Orange two five six. Yeah. Two, you are kidding. No, no, no. Nobody wants it. They've all Good. ripped up the tickets after yeah, we said this is the on. end. Everyone went. The gentleman there is waving his hand. He will accept. Oh wow. What a man. I don't know what he's going to do with it. He's a brave man. There was some some coffee spilled down there earlier. So. <laughs> oh, easy. Wait till Action we get in the fire. car park to do yeah. that. So we um we have something else to talk about. We do. Yeah. Is this? Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's got my name on the sheet, yep. so I suppose I've got to yep. talk about. This. Yeah. Tip. We were going to have a bit of a discussion um, about a couple of subjects, and one of the ones that I wanted to talk about was something that I deal with a lot, but I think people don't really talk about. It's media production and, well, in, from my point of view, sound production on Linux. And I think it could be, I don't know, I think it could be easier. And it's kind of like the elephant in the room, because when I, when I talk to musicians, all they say is, like, I need a Mac to do music or I need Windows to do music. And I think at this stage in the development of Linux, shouldn't we be a bit further along with that? So... Uh, comment <laughs> well we we do use linux you know we use well, linux we do too. yeah but so you know yeah but we're not really professional are we <laughs> oh, sure well, we're not. I mean, come on. currently we're using a piece of paper <laughs> yeah we're using a piece of paper that shows our level yeah, yeah. there's a so, bit of truth to that so are there anyone is there anyone in the audience that does any um media creation on linux or just any want, kind or just wants to edit their own home videos Have we got where's the radio mm. mic gone there is a radio mic exactly. over there yeah. radio mic there if anyone wants to there. comment okay. run 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 put your hand up again <laughs> people over, here, Gordon, over here at the by the door someone at the front yeah. might be able to pass it along maybe okay. might be quicker. there we go so gordon what is it that you do what do you use what problems have you found uh well i i use ardor Okay. And I use uh, a couple of different uh, soft synths. Uh, mm. There's a, a serious dearth of soft synths in Linux. You have got things like the... Um, uh, I can't remember the name now. There's now a project that's basically a redistributable uh, clean room implementation of the VST headers. So you can now write things like VST hosts to run effectively run okay. uh, VST plugins under Wine. Uh, but under they're horrible. Wine. Under, under Wine? Effectively under Wine, using Wine Libs and some other bits and pieces. With Ardor? Uh, with Ardor, yeah. Or for anyone who doesn't know, VST plugins are basically like the industry standard for sound plugins, virtual instruments and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but but there, is, there is a certain lack of polish. Ardor is probably the n one of the nicest Linux applications of any kind. 
uh, mm -hmm. out there. I know that's a, a, a bit of a big thing to say, but it has had an awful lot of eyeballs. It's had a lot of investment from uh, companies like Mackey and Harrison, uh, SSL, who made, you know, I mean, they've been making digital mixing desks for 20 odd years. Uh, a lot of money, a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, it's very, very solid. Uh, I use it for making really, really hideous and unlistenable electronic music. <laughs> wow. Okay. The thing, I love Ardo, but the thing is, right, I mean, it's a great program and, you know, they're working really hard on it, but it does, it's, it's only just started to do MIDI. And we're like, what year are we in? You know, it's like <laughs> everything else has yeah. been doing MIDI for ages. You have to run Rose Garden or something else in conjunction to do MIDI with your audio and stuff. And they've, I know they've been bringing that in, but it's been a long time, and it, it still it, seems a little bit... It's still a little ways off. off. The pace, yeah. it, it, it is a little way off, but you can use Jack to synchronize uh, another Jack-capable MIDI sequencer. Mm. Um, one of the things it doesn't do, and one of the things I got really, really upset with it about, was that you, you can't, uh, as you can with... Um, <coughs> uh, you, what you can't do is you can't cut an audio track and then glue the ends together, mm. so you can yeah. sort of slide the whole thing as a cohesive unit and when I was cutting hash lug radio that was a complete pain in the <laughs> hindmost because you'd have yeah. to select the entire track to move if you wanted to move something in the timeline uh, mm. you either needed to bounce it onto another track mm. uh, or select the whole thing so if that's a, a, a kind of relatively good story with Ardor ish <laughs> as a success <laughs> story you mean as a, rather, no, the no, glass no, rather than the uh, kind of yeah. Yeah. no I'm thinking he uses it yeah, exactly. therefore it's a good story because I asked if anyone used. <laughs> yeah, he said he makes horrible, unlistable music. electronic music. Though. Well, <laughs> yeah, no you can't help it. <laughs> that was his, your review, not mine. <laughs> but is, are there any other tools that people use for for creation, not just audio, but Imran? Yeah, Imran. Any, yeah video I mean, is um, a big thing as well. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I was doing the, the Log Radio documentary. Some of you may have seen tomorrow, and I couldn't have done it two years tomorrow? ago. Maybe so yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's, been, Has, it's been quite a long weekend, yeah. Um, <laughs> some of you may have seen, seen yesterday. Um, and I couldn't have done it two years ago because there wasn't a, uh, a multi track video editor that was reliable and featureful um, on Linux. And it's only in the last year or so that things have really started to flesh out. And they're still a bit crashy and not, not fantastic. Um, but it, it's progress, but it's so slow, such a slow progress. And it's so far behind the Mac and Windows offerings. Sorry, Imran. Yeah, uh, I, I use uh, GIMP for uh, occasional sort of image editing. And um, there was uh, something on the Ubuntu podcast, your podcast, uh, about the name GIMP being uh, maybe holding that back. I'm re reframing the question a bit, but uh, you know, I, in Adobe, you've got products that with cool sounding names like Photoshop and Lightroom. And you know, I think the GIMP should be renamed. Perhaps that would be I mean, it's a cool, really yeah. good bit of software, but yeah. I, I just wanted to just mention that well, I'm using GIMP in it. In um, name. Matthew Paul Thomas's um, uh, talk yesterday, he was talking about you, you shouldn't let geeks name, name programs. <laughs> it's you just because they come up with dumb names like that. You know, I'm not saying GIMP is a dumb name, but arguably for some people, it will be considered as you know, hmm, interesting, a leather. You know. Well, if you're if you're trying to say, oh, there's this software on Linux and it's called GIMP to someone who is non-technical and knows what that word means you know <laughs> it's a bit you could might feel a bit uncomfortable you but know. the fact <laughs> is that it works so it is, yeah. it is a tool you could use on Linux yeah, yeah but it's, it's put as the only graphics package pretty much on Linux and I hate using it but it's the yeah, only the thing I've got well, it's, yeah, it's, nice. it's, yeah. it's like using Adobe Photoshop which I don't want to use a lot of that I just want to be able to crop images do little bits of draw a rectangle. It depends what you draw see. a rectangle, which you cannot do in GIMP. <laughs> That's what yeah, Inkscape is yeah, yeah, Inkscape. 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 There was some fantastic um, drawings done yesterday with GIMP. Yeah, by an artist, a professional yeah, artist. Hey. Chris, Chris Chris whatever here, product actually, he used he? to. I mean, he's no, obviously used not. to yeah. using it. No, he's but he's, he uses professional level products because he is a professional artist and he... Why don't we ask not. him? He's, he's shaking his head. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, he's a very good artist. Let's, let's speak to Chris. John has his hand up. We'll come to him in a minute. But if you pass the mic back to Chris... Who's got it? Keep going all the way back. We want that mic back at the end, by the way. He's got to go back. to tell us that that wasn't GIMP yesterday. So, Chris, I what, is it, Inkscape. what is it that you on. use? What, what tools do you find useful? Where are the sticking points? Um, well, to be honest, I'm most comfortable with Inkscape. Um, yeah. GIMP's quite good. There's a lot in the GIMP. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say its name particularly holds it back. I mean, and you talk to a lot of people who do use graphics creation products and most of them do tend to have heard of the GIMP. 
because a lot of people are using it. Mm. And they might not use it, but it's, you know, people talk about it. So it's at the point where at least people know of it. And because it's got such an unusual name, in some ways. <laughs> but um, is it really that many people who know about it, or just the people that people. we know know about it? No, I, I know quite a lot of people who, you know, aren't at all into Linux. And, you know, they mostly use, well, pretty much entirely use Photoshop. And they've heard of the, gi uh, the GIMP. Not even people that are particularly into graphics, especially, but just do some of that sort of stuff. And I think possibly because it's got such an ear-catching name, that possibly helps in that way. I'd argue that there aren't many, um, uh, many pieces of software out there for doing stuff like, what, you know, things like Photoshop or Paint. Um, mm. There are plenty of uh, pieces of software like that for Linux. If you want to do anything particularly, if you really need something like Photoshop, the GIMP, the GIMP is probably your best bet, and it's getting a lot better. But for other things, you've got Paint.net, and uh, I think that's the one. My Paint, something like that. You, you've these got loads of stuff. Krita, um, I think one of them might have been. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there are plenty of things on Linux um, that you can do that aren't as hardcore as the GIMP is, mm. are a lot more usable than the GIMP. Mm. Okay. Less hardcore. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Less hardcore than but the GIMP. Yeah, there's plenty out there. And for most things, people tend to. And for a lot of things, people tend to get on better with Inkscape anyhow, so mm. there's always that to fall back on, which is both really useful if you're doing fairly high-end stuff, although you might want to start doing VET stuff in Blender if you're crazy. Mm. Um, <gasps> it's, it's something that I'm dabbling with. But for most, uh, for most things, it's a good tool that even a beginner can pick up quite easily, Inkscape. It's right. something that makes sense, generally, but you mm. can... You can take those base skills and learn a hell of a lot into it and do some great stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a professional artist. No, I <laughs> might be one these days, but... Mm. Okay, well, you should be. He should be, if you're not. Yeah. Well, anyone else agree, he yeah. should be a professional artist. He's got yeah. Did you use Inkscape to do the, the logos? Yes. The OddCamp logo? Yes. I Is that what you use all the time? Um, I use Inkscape a lot, yeah. I use GIMP for photo editing. But okay. um, for anything like a logo or something, it's just because it's, you know, it's vector graphics, which is really good for a logo, you know, can resize it and stuff. And I really like Inkscape. It's an awesome program. It's really good. Cool. I think it's better than Illustrator. Mm. Okay, Jono was waving his hand in the air. He makes horrible music as well. <laughs> <laughs> On a Mac. Yes, indeed. On a uh, Mac, yeah. On a Mac. <laughs> right, start the clock. How long till he mentions Jacosha? Oh, the community. Jacosha. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> community. Jacosha, Jacosha community. Act sucks. Um, <laughs> He's got uh, a microphone nice. again. <laughs> so um, I think, going back to music, um, yeah. th it strikes me that the problem is broken into two areas. One is features, like Dan says, you've got things like, you know, if you want to do, like the thing that's held me back from Ardour, is, apart from the fact that I think it's incredibly hard to use, is the fact that it doesn't have MIDI, and I need MIDI for drums and things like that. <coughs> and that's getting better, you know, I mean, Ardour's an incredibly featureful project and also people should donate money to the guy who works in it because he works in it full time yeah and he's, all, and he's always short of cash and he's a really nice guy so if anyone wants to support this donate him some money mm. but the other thing that strikes me the, the big problem with, li with Linux has been integration because you know you've got Jack um, and you've got hardware devices and you've got MIDI frameworks and you've got the application all these different bits and pieces and the problem traditionally was the fact that none of them really spoke to each other very well and part of the reason why it was so hard is because you had to know how to run Jack and you know, how to make it talk to your card and how ALSA works and all this kind of stuff. And it reminds me of 10 years ago with the desktop where X didn't really talk to GNOME or KDE very mm. well and devices didn't work. You start to manually mount a floppy disk. And I get the impression it's getting better because of that, because mm. things are starting to talk to each other more. And maybe that's, that's where things will get better. So I think part of it is like distros making it better. Mm. Um, I mean, Ubuntu has the Ubuntu Studio uh, derivative. Yeah. Does anybody know of any distros that are helping media creation directly by supporting particular projects or anything? I don't know if you know them. There's other music distros. There's Dyn yeah, Studio 64. There's Studio 64, Musics. Yeah. Um, there was yeah. Dyn there's Bolic. <laughs> Aren't they basically just packaging up the but software yeah, that's already there? I, I don't think they're, they're backed by a, a big organisation. I think, again, they're um, yeah. usually just uh, one or two people, a small community. I have one mm. final comment. When we started doing Shot of Jack, we thought, let's use Jacosha, right? <laughs> and we actually did use it. Uh, we d we recorded separately. Act recorded on his machine, like using this horrible Skype 
recording get workaround thing. I recorded in Cubase. Uh, <laughs> but we double we, whammy of proprietary <laughs> whammy software. Yeah. 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 Proprietary on both ends. Because I don't hate freedom like you do. <laughs> no, but he works in Ubuntu one. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, no, but seriously though, uh, we we you know I imported the audio into into Jacosha and mixed it and everything was fine. And we actually have one of the one of the shows which has been done in Jacosha. The problem, the reason why we haven't you we're not going to stick with it is because compression isn't very good on Linux. And that's the only thing that's holding us back. If there was a good compressor, and Dan, maybe you know of a good compressor. Uh, What's the one we, the, we the use SC, one in our door? Yeah, the SC4 thing yeah. Steve uh, Harris does, which is a, an yeah. order yep. Ladsper plugin. One of the Ladsper plugins. And the new good. version of Audacity as well, they've done something with the compressor plugin in there because it used to be god awful. Because well, in the Cubase, new, the new, I think it's 1.3.8 right. or something like that. I went on it and I thought I'll give a go on the compressor just to see if it's got any good, and it's really it's a lot better <laughs> when it doesn't crash. In Cubase, yeah. I had a compressor. Crash. I had a compressor to the track, and then I select vocal, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Whereas in Jakosha, I have like a million buttons. Well, <laughs> that's the integration thing. Mm. I'm glad that we can help these startup podcasts um, with advice. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I think it's probably time to move on to our next segment now. What people say to me when I ask them, like, you know, what's the problem with, say, sound on Linux and stuff like that, is that everybody wants to do their own sound system. And mm. from what, what people say to me is, programmers inherently think that they know better than everyone else. So when they come and they need a sound system, they're not going to use the existing one. They're like, I can write a better one. So they'll write a better one. And we end up with loads of them, and they're not really any of them aren't really finished and if we concentrated our efforts a bit in mm. some ways it might be finished and it links into the point that Popey wanted to talk about more yeah. generally I'm going to get a kicking for this um, are we I, the other night um, the other morning there was a, a, a bit where the BBC showed Ubuntu very quickly very briefly and there was a whole blog back and forth between a couple of people me included and it got me thinking that the guy on telly showed one distro and he just mentioned it, just showed a screenshot of the website. In fact, he didn't even show the distro. He just showed a screenshot of the website and he mentioned Ubuntu. And I thought, well, hang on, Ubuntu is just one distro. And I looked on Wikipedia and there's a page, list of Linux distributions. There's 200 of them, over 200 Linux distributions. And we're all completely fragmented, all using whatever distro we use. And I know probably more than 10 different distros being used in this room. Are we spreading ourselves too thin? Should we be focusing our attention on one distro or one family of distros or yes. should yes. we be <laughs> concentrating <laughs> rather than spreading ourselves too thin? That was the question. Okay, and... <laughs> and we had an instant yes there from there a few people yes. in the middle of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fedora it is. Not, it, my, I, wasn't, I wasn't intending saying which one it was. I just, uh, just the general, general are we spreading idea. ourselves too thin? Well, I, I, I don't think so. There's a, a couple of hands up at the back, if we can get the radio mic down there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you, if you do think... On. Sorry, Fab. Go on. I well, just wanted well, to like, say, yeah. like, my point is I don't, I don't think so. I think it's good that we have more distributions. For one thing, you know, if I run the new Ubuntu and I do something with Pulse Audio and it totally hoses my system and I can't record anything anymore... This is a hypothetical, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> not that that had ever happened before. You um, found a I could just, you know get a f Fedora CD, install that, and um, hopefully they did something different, and then I could use that. So Yeah, but then, then you've got like 10 different distros all broken in different small ways, rather than one distro that's and broken. And that being totally <laughs> broken. <laughs> well, yeah, I just think if, if, all those, if all that attention was focused on one of them, get one working really, really well, and rather than all of them broken in lots of tiny different presumably ways. Presumably by one, you mean Ubuntu. No, no, no I, I'm not, I don't care which one it is. I, you know, focus you on do. one. I agree. Says, <laughs> well, no, I happen to say <laughs> Popey from the Ubuntu UK podcast. And the community council. No, we should. It should be one distro. But I mean, we're all geeks. Uh, we can all pick up on the little packages that we want to use. If I want to use Openbox, I'll use Openbox. If I want to use GNOME, I'll use that. Should be one distro. If you want something different, then you you know you get that app and you use it. But yeah. is it, are the mm. distros a good analogy to things like sound, which just don't work? Whereas distros, there are some good, there are good ones. People quite happy using them, and it's not. I mean, Ubuntu is a good example, but not just saying that. <laughs> but you can get it on a netbook, and your parents can buy it, and they're not interested in free software. 
or anything, they'll just use it. They just want it to work. I don't think audio's got that far. Yeah, no, I think... And the d- frustrating thing is that you try one, it breaks. You try another, it breaks. Mm. Mm. Okay, we've got a comment at the back yeah. of the room. Yep. Yeah, Flick the switch. Yeah, that's better. problem, yeah. not Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> For once. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think it's, it's good that we've got the range of distributions that we do just because... Just talk into the mic a bit Sorry. before. Sorry. That's better. That it... It drives competition where maybe Fedora wants to get one up on Ubuntu, Ubuntu want to get up one up mm. on Fedora, and we're getting a lot of good stuff out of it. Where I think we're falling down is where we get a hundred different variations because we want a different color theme. <laughs> mm. Maybe we want don't want yeah. brown Ubuntu. Or a different language, maybe. You yeah. see a lot of different... Well, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. You, if you look at the, the Wikipedia page, list, it's called List of Linux Distributions. It's grouped into the ones that are based on Deb-based systems and the ones that are based on RPM or you know Debian and Red Hat, basically. And some of them are you know the same thing, but with a different color scheme or the same thing with a few different apps in. And, okay, that's useful for a very small set of people. And But, you know, some of them are really popular, like Linux mm. Mint. You know, it's a it's basically Ubuntu with a few extra packages it, the, and a mm. theme, but it's but useful for some certain sect of people. But isn't it like when it's useful for one person, isn't that like a reason for the distribution being there? Is it a reason for everyone to spread themselves so thin because it's useful for one person? But if it is only useful for one person, then only one person is going to worry about it, and nobody else will. I think you, I, I would never want to take away the freedom that we have to go and. You know, make our own thing. Yeah, but you keep but the freedom. You know, we want to essentially dominate the world. Yeah. And you're only going to do that when um, you can go to the shop and buy a, a desktop with Ubuntu on it. Yeah, but some people don't want to dominate the world. Yeah, I don't they just want, want us to no, carry no. on using yeah, it. I just want stop everyone else. I just want Pulse Audio to work. Okay. Like, <laughs> don't care about the world. Like, there's a few Sorry, people wanting to make comments. Have so we got the. Where's it, the radio? Yeah, mic? it's there. Oh, it's there. For years and years before Linux came along, uh, one group of people were concentrating solely on Unix. And that was nowhere near as good as Linux is these days for the desktop. You've also had Microsoft continually uh, focusing their effort on one OS. That hasn't worked. You know, what is the problem with uh, having lots of different choice? Hasn't worked in what measure? <laughs> Windows, is, Windows is still awful. Oh, yeah, it's awful. But if you measure it by a number of people who use it and uh, yeah. amount of money it turns a company over... It's worked quite well, thanks very much, in Money in the Bank. Yeah, but we want an OS that works, not uh, an OS that makes money. Uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. that goes hand in hand, though. Can you wait for the mic? Where is it? Okay, yeah, so John, and then we'll come to the noisy boys in the middle. <laughs> the, the OS isn't what makes the money for Microsoft, it's the applications that do. Um, I think it, it's something like 50 to 1 on the uh, cost. Or, uh, it, uh, it's a random figure, but it's a lot. It's a big difference between how much money the OS makes for Microsoft and how much money Microsoft Office makes. For yeah, but one begats the other. You, 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 you can't run Office easily on Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever. Yeah, so but you, you, could, you could run Office on Mac hmm. for, for ages, and yeah. you can't anymore, but... Well, but it's still, a, van- it's still yeah. a fairly small proportion of the people. True, have. I accept that. Yeah. I'll pass the mic on to someone else. Okay, yeah. Um, I think, uh, was it Chris had his hand up? Yeah. There's Go a comment it. on Twitter. Oh, is there? A, a, sane, a sensible one. Yeah. They're, they're Chris. using it properly. Someone's suggesting we have satanic Ubuntu as the main one. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a good point from Binary Life that um, I think the point is about not saying extreme one or the other. It doesn't have to be that you can't. You can have millions and millions, or you you can only have one. It's about just having a bit of variety, but not spreading yourself too thin. Yeah. So yeah. have well, suggest ten. Mm. My point is, um, surely you're solving fundamentally different questions. Like, Ubuntu, really good for desktop, but you know, you spend all your time worrying about what shade of brown it should be. And frankly, I don't care. You know, who worries about what shade of brown it is? Ubuntu, in general. Um, No, I think everyone else. (laughs) Everyone else worries about what shade of brown it is. But you worry about the desktop. You worry. That's all. You all Ubuntu. but yeah. some, but, okay, this this is Hold a good a minute, point. It's turning okay. to look radio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but a, 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 huge, a huge number of those that but list of Linux distributions are desktop distributions. Yeah, fine. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm a server person. I use server distros. I'm not going to use a desktop distro for a server application. 
in the same way you're not going to use you okay know, so one so desktop so one even, server. A, even ubuntu has managed to split it into at least two so you've got ubuntu and ubuntu server as two separate things it, and they both have the same name so maybe they don't count as different distros but actually they are um well, it's the it's same the, packages you can easily turn the desktop into ways. yeah okay you've got x installed on you know it's yeah. x is installed on all of these things so are they the same you have 200 distros that all have mm. the same packages <laughs> Okay. Sorry, Chris hasn't taken his medicine today. <laughs> <laughs> Just one tiny point. Um, the thing I love about Linux is that so much of the underlying system is the same, right? So most of the distros on the 200 distros, they're all sharing many of the same components. And to me, it's like choice is a great thing. And it, it, the, fundamentally, this is never going to change. We're always going to have all these distributions. We're never ever going to all agree on one thing. Mm -hmm. But what happens, as we've seen with Ubuntu and Fedora and OpenSUSE and things like that, is people flock around things that work for them. Like, Chris, you want a server operating system, so you pick something that works for you. I want a desktop operating system, that I pick something that works for me. And I don't think we'll ever be able to solve the problem of spreading ourselves too thin, but it's fundamentally not too much of a problem because many of the packages are upstream and are the same thing anyway. So, okay, yeah. good point. There was a hand up at the back, gentleman in the red T-shirt. I think the competition of, of distributions is a good thing for the progress of, of features, but I think that they should operate, you know, work close together to produce the, the, the base operating environment, um, like United Linux was trying to do several years ago, and maybe the distros can focus more on what they provide to the end user in the way of applications that are included end user experience. Isn't that difficult because some of them want um, very, like for example, there are certain kernel patches in one that aren't in another, and that's that's very low level and very difficult to get the the two the two entirely separate distributions same at the core level if they've got fundamentally different de decisions about which kernel patches are going to go in. Yeah, but again, I mean, you need that sort of similarity at the core level so that when say a third-party vendor creates something for Linux that they'll then work across the distributions mm. without any problem. Mm. It's like um, the fact that we've got two completely different package management systems, RPM and DEB, that are currently two. used. <laughs> and then, yeah, you've got all the different ones, you know, and then just straight TARGZs. If we were to then just focus on a single package management system as well, so that then when it comes to, to non-techy users using everything, it's the same across all the board, mm. it just might look a little bit different and, and the, the desktop environment's a little bit different, but underneath everything's pretty much the same a, a third party developer comes in wants to develop an application they'll be guaranteed that the same libraries are there in the same place you know, a, and they don't have to think right i want to create something i'm gonna have to create a version for for red hat based for you know systems for debian based systems a, and then all of those other weird little ones <laughs> so <laughs> it you it's controversial, that, you that, but not me. if there is a need for this consistency why did you, united linux not really take off ego it, 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 and from, from what I saw, it, it was each people obsessed with their own way, and then it just they didn't want to change, and it, it fell apart. If you know, from what I could see, isn't that what the Linux standards base is designed to do anyway? Yeah, but that only goes so far. You need to take it up to your yeah, you know, it, because it's become a much more complicated system now with, with mm. everything else operating on it. We should with the Linux, yeah, you know, something like the Linux standard base should then be taken higher to define. So everything that's provided, and this is how it operates. Mm. Mm. Okay, good stuff. Um, there's a couple more hands up. Um, Chris has got his Andy? hand up. Andy? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Whichever way. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Hello. Yeah. Right, uh, welcome to the radio. It's this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, I just wanted to say, uh, I think the diversity of all these distributions is pretty essential to keeping it interesting for everybody. Um, However, I do take the point that um, the problem with having so many distributions is that ultimately thousands of people are working on exactly the same problems at the same time. Mm. So mm. I guess really the, it comes down to the efficiency of patches going upstream. That, that is all. Duplication of effort. All yeah, that, I mean, I, that really, I imagine that's what part of Popey's point is. Mm. Um, so I mean, yes, yeah, the people working on it, but and also the promotion, the advocacy, and yeah. you know, when you when you stand next to someone and have to explain what free software is and what Linux is, and they go, "All right, give me a CD," and it's like, "Well, okay, have one of these many hundreds of different types of CDs." He does actually yeah. have a coat with them in. He'll <laughs> <laughs> so really be in the park idea. later if you want. <laughs> okay, that is all. Let's go Andy. to uh, Andy, Andy, and in the end here, on the end, in blue. 
what you're saying, Andy. So you talk about people spreading themselves too thin, but the people you're talking about are the developers. Not necessarily. That's well, some. there's developers and there's distributions. Do you not think that it's pointless telling developers what to work on and it's pointless telling distributions what to release? In reality, isn't the best approach to do something like what Mark Shuttleworth and others were talking about and synchronize the major releases of the major distributions to the same schedule so that everybody knows what's in it and what version it is and it's easy to support and you can fix the bugs? I, actually, I wasn't thinking of it from that uh, from that point of view. I was more thinking of it from the advocacy point of view. When you when you're standing on a street corner, giving out CDs on Software Freedom Day, as we have, as I will often do. Yeah, on a, as I do, you know, standing there handing out CDs. And there's, a, you know, it just so happens that that event sponsored by Canonical, so we're giving out a bunch of CDs. But it could have been anything, and any number of those events could have been giving out different CDs. But and are we giving out a mixed message, or would it just be, m you know, more efficient for us to concentrate on one? Is that really a problem? Like, I don't think that's a problem. When it's, I, it's confusing for end users. I don't think so, because the thing that they get, get, get first is, like, once they get what Linux is, it's much more harder to explain, for example, what free, free software is. Yeah, but like most late. people get that Linux is that there's, like, different Linux distributions. No, but they're not interested. No, no. They're not interested. They don't care. I don't think they do. <laughs> not in the general You public. need to give one disk to the non-Linux user. So if you give them three, they no, won't I, I don't. I, wouldn't, I would just give them one. You know, Which just one? give them the—I don't know—you give them the Ubuntu CD, <laughs> and I give them a Fedora CD. Like, and okay, and exactly, and that's that's us, that's us, and that, and that's just two people giving out two CDs. Scale that up, hundred people. Are they all giving out hundred different CDs? No, they're not, because there's yeah. a smaller number. But it's still spreading that advocacy thin. But but why does that why does that matter? Because it's not no like point. I agree with Fab completely. Because it's not like if somebody goes to buy a TV and then there's twenty different types of TVs, they're not all going to go. This is too confusing. I can't watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, they do go. People go into shops and they look at all those sellers and they well. Yeah. But they, I mean, if, if all these things had roughly the same versions of the same types of software and everybody knew and it just worked, then they'd pick the one they liked the best. They wouldn't go, oh, my sound doesn't work. I'm going to switch to I don't know satanic Ubuntu <laughs> maybe it will then I wonder how many people have taken their TV back because they bought it and it didn't actually do what they thought it was going to do um, mm. oh, there's a the couple, of on, couple of people a couple of people on Twitter in that like yeah. have said like the whole IPM deb thing um, because that would be a problem if you were giving a package to somebody else to install because you thought it was good then and then they can't install it because it's an IPM when it needs to be a deb mm. or whatever yeah, okay. that that's exactly what I was just about to say. Yeah, the, the TV thing, all, all well and good. But you go to the Skype website, since I mentioned it earlier, and it says, download Skype for Windows, download. Download Skype for Mac, download. Download for Linux, and there's 40 different download links. Yeah. How many people would complain if they bought a telly, and then it turns out that it doesn't receive BBC One because you've got the wrong telly? Mm. <laughs> yeah, and cool, that's yeah. the situation we're in. You go to the Skype website, and you you have to care whether you're running 32-bit Ubuntu or 64-bit Ubuntu or 32-bit Fedora or 64-bit Fedora or tiny sofa Linux or something. Or AM, uh, whatever the <laughs> Or new AMD 64, yeah. yeah or I don't care! Yeah. yeah. And exactly the same thing for the Amazon MP3 download service. You know, there's a great Firefox plugin, but it's only 32-bit and it's only some versions of Ubuntu. And as an institution, they have to pay extra development money to support more distros. Which distros do they choose? There's a whole heap of questions that essentially as a commercial organisation we're going to have difficulty getting support for them because of the fragmentation in the Linux community I'm seeing lots of nods of heads I, I like that okay there's a mic coming round <laughs> to the gentleman yeah. on the end there <laughs> is it just oh, Chris again I, I just wanted to make the quick point that there seems to be two very different types of distributions that you get out there you've got your respins which is basically Ubuntu with a different colour different set of packages and that seems fine that's convenient for people if they want to say Oh, you know, I'm, you know, if they wanted to go and show off Satanic Ubuntu to their Satanic friends, great way to get people into Linux. To Satan, sorry. Um, but on the other side, obviously, you've got different distributions that do things quite significantly differently at a lower level. Uh, it's not just a different set of packages, a different theme. It's, you know, significant changes. And is it worth taking that into consideration? Do we just do we not care about the respins? I mean, a lot of people have mentioned respins, but I don't see them as much of a threat if they're all yeah, relying yeah. on the same kernel operating system. But some of the respins get a lot of attention, like Ubuntu Studio, mm -hmm. like Linux Mint, for example, which, you know, at first glance is a different colour. And then when you look a little bit deeply, OK, it's got a couple of extra packages. No, um, I would argue yeah. that. But Linux Mint's more than just a different colour of Ubuntu. They've got their own developed things in there. They've got the, the Mint updater, which is different to the Ubuntu updater. They've got their own backup solution. They've got, like, 
All oh, right, they're not huge things, but so they are do, tools. So why don't they contribute those upstream? I don't know. I don't make Linux Mint. Don't ask me. I'm just <laughs> saying that's, it's that's not that's Ubuntu. That's what I mean. It's, it's green. splitting it thin. It's it's a a if they contributed those upstream, yeah, I mean, yeah, arguably yeah, well, Ubuntu point. could contribute all of theirs upstream to Debian but, and, and everything. But I mean, it's not so big of a problem because they're basically all compatible. Like I've never run yeah. into like running Mint. I've never clicked on a link for like an Ubuntu package and it didn't work. Mm. Well, I mean, if you've got a set of packages that significantly improves the user experience for certain people, it makes sense if it's easy, if it's just a one-click thing to do a respin. Yeah. It makes perfect sense to do that. If it takes a lot of time and energy to do a respin, yeah, it's probably not worth that kind of thing. But mm. if you've got your packages available as a repository for the base operating system, which I'd hope a lot of these respins do, um, and such like that, there's it, not really so much of a problem with that kind of thing. Would you agree? Okay. Um, Sorry, we're all laughing at the Twitter. Pickle forward, has a comment to make. Uh, what, read out Pickle's comment then. Uh, Og, uh, Og, Camp seem, Og Camp seems to be advocating reducing the freedom to fork distributions for niche markets. Are we? That was Popey, no. I thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's that's all Popey. Popey was okay, it was me. Right, uh, uh, comment there. Um, the, the point about um, software vendors like Skype or Opera um, having to provide loads of different package formats for different distros. Mm. I can't see it being that difficult for um, package management systems to facilitate those companies producing hybrid packages that actually include all of the spe specific bits for DEBs or RPMs in a single package. Mm. There's been a few attempts to make unified package systems and um, I'm not quite talking about something like package kit. I, I, I don't right. think I mean package kit. The yes, the other funny ones. I mean something that actually is a deb and an RPM package at the same time. Yeah, universal. Like universal one or something. Interesting. Okay, we'll have we'll have, uh, uh, um, we'll have yeah we'll have one more comment over here and then we'll wrap yeah it up. we'll have to move on I think if if only to please aid. <laughs> I don't know where he is, I can't see him. He's over there, hiding he? behind a pillar. I can't see the bald. Oh, there we go, there it is. Um, yes, sir. It's a very quick point. Uh, I think we have to prioritise this. Um, I don't think Gwib is important. I don't think um, <laughs> the your world of Goo is important that it operates completely cross-platform across every single distribution, but online banking, education software, those sorts of things got to work across all the distributions because we can't control which is going to end up uh, on anybody's desktop. We just have to make sure that the important applications, the one that everybody needs to use, like as I say, online banking, education, those things but, must work. Uh, but do you not see how that is what perpetuates the split? Is because that's that's what you think you, you think people need. My, if you ask my daughter, she couldn't give a monkeys about online banking. Yeah. She would like World of Goo. You know. <laughs> I, actually, I, I've rethought that. I, I really do need World of Goo to work. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm glad we've come to uh, we've really that out. World is pretty. Buy a Nintendo Wii. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not a lovely open source Nintendo, Nintendo yeah. Wii. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. That about wraps up that. Mm. And that yeah. wraps up our second segment. So we got some other stuff to talk about. Though we need to mm. talk about the whole Og Camp thing. How's yes. it gone? Have people enjoyed it? Um, have you had a good day? Has it, has it been worth it? Okay. So yes, thing. Okay. That's one cool. of the uh, w one of the um, scary things about doing a bar camp is that we have an empty grid at the beginning of the day, and uh, it's fantastic to see everybody has put well, not everybody, but a lot of people have put talks and, and filled in the gaps on the schedule and you know, given some really interesting talks. Really as far quickly as I can. Yeah. filled up. Yeah. So thank you for coming along and participating in the spirit of bar camp and, and bringing things to show and tell and do. The pig thing apparently was brilliant. Um, I wanted to see that as well. The pig yeah. thing. It ruled. Pig analysis or something like that, was it? Pig analysis. Fab now, now so, knows far um, more about himself than he did before. And yes. pigs. Really? And pigs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, quick shout out. Who, um, who saw what today that really interested them? What are they going to yeah. take away from yeah. today? Yeah. Twittering House. Twittering yeah. House. Excellent. That was cool. Andy? That was really cool. Mm. Is that it? <laughs> 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 Anybody else enjoy anything else? Poke book. Poke book. Po oh, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> It there's the rage. <laughs> John's just had a cardiac at the back. Yeah. Which reminds me, we should go through our sponsors later as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this then. wouldn't have happened without the list of sponsors that I didn't have time to write down. So, <laughs> let's. Right. Just look at the mug. Get a mug. Get a mug. Get a mug. Most of them are on a mug. Look on the mug. There you go. I knew there was a point to those yeah. mugs. <laughs> 
So let's start with Pope Book. <laughs> I hope you'll have dozens more users on your site. <laughs> it's the most expensive we'll practical to... joke in the world. Yeah. Uh, Viglin for providing the uh, NPCs that we gave away. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Bitfolk Andy over here. Uh, Linux Emporium. Yeah. Where are the Linux Emporium guys? Uh, Canonical. Good old Canonical. <laughs> Last clapping for Canonical, I noticed. Yeah. Mm. And Open Learning Centre. Andy yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Open Learning Centre. And guys. finally, Linux Format Media Partners. And media Partners. Partners. And Tinker. And Tinker. Who were related if not who weren't on the mud. Yes. Yeah. But yes, there we go. That's great. Thank you very yeah. much. So what's the plan? I don't know. Um, I, a hotel bar sounds good to me so, in about okay. half an hour. Am I going to get shot for asking this question? I know this oh, all no, came up like no, yesterday. You do. No, but, yeah. Well, we'll find out when I've asked it, I suppose, if I get shot. Go on. Um, do you think we should do this again? Would you yeah. like to come this again? I'm now really yeah. unpopular over here, but quite popular over there. So <laughs> I'm going over there. <laughs> He's off. See, the thing is, it, it's harder than it looks. Yeah, um, no, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not just, you know... My, my respect for the, uh, the four guys in the middle, which previously was at rock bottom, is, um, <laughs> is now very slightly higher. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I've, had a, I've had a great day, actually. It's been really enjoyable, yeah. and I uh, hope you have too. Um, w- let's discuss something next year. Okay, yep. Let us know what you want to see. Yes, and, and genuinely, yeah. feedback, positives, negatives. I mean, we came to this, this hotel because um, it's the official hotel for like Radio Live, so people will be here it's to get out fault. of bed and come here. Um, yeah. We so couldn't find a hotel with more stairs. That was the problem. We did, <laughs> we did try, but this was the only one with no lift and, and enough stairs that we needed. Um, but, yes, so genuinely, feedback, what did work, what didn't work. Send us some emails and stuff afterwards when you get home. We've had, had a bit of a think. We'd be really interested to hear what you, uh, what you think. Yeah, anything about the venue, the content, enough rooms, not enough rooms. You know, what else? Not enough power th- sockets. Yeah. <laughs> no Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, yes, we have Wi-Fi in all of the hotel, they told me. Yes, right. in do. all of the hotel. In all of the hotel, one access point in the middle of floor two, probably. Yeah. Cool. But nobody knows where it is apparently. No. <laughs> anyway, are yeah, we done? So I think we should say thank you to everyone for coming because I'm amazed yeah. at how many people are here. Um, Mad fools. Yeah. When we decided to do this, there was a bit of like some people were saying, "Oh God, there'll only be 20 people. What'll happen?" But it's turned out brilliant, and that's mainly down to all of you people coming along yeah. and I'm getting involved. Radio Live. Yeah, well, and look really convenient on. that they were nearby. I mean, they well, were, you know, they it was were very lucky of them to they have their warm. event near ours. It was lucky that they warmed up a bit for us, yeah, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. They're That's a support fine. act now, you realise. <laughs> yes, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, right, whose right. music are we going to play on the way out? Uh, John yeah. O's. <laughs> John O's World of Metal. The uh, free software song, of Go course. No, we're not playing no. that, are we? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's your laptop. If you've got the free software song on your laptop, I haven't. haven't. So I'm, right. I'm not playing it. Good. That's all right. I'll play your. I thing. don't want to upset anyone, but it's awful. Play this. <laughs> I well, like the sentiment. I just don't like the song. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming, and maybe we'll see you next year. Yeah. See you in the bar. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, one other quick thing before we finish. Does anyone know the Liverpool score? We won. We've won. Yeah, we'll Fantastic. I'll see you in the bar then. <laughs>